All right, so Bucks win, Bucks win, Bucks win. Incredible stuff here from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Very fun game. Brady ends up with over 400 passing yards in this one. So uh, I'm trying to think. I believe he's just shy of 5,000 right now. So he nearly had 5,000 just in the 16 games. Uh, so that's you know pretty cool. Uh, but obviously, more importantly, the Buccaneers win. Uh, that's the first thing I want to talk about. I'm happy we won. Listen, I know it's the Jets. I know the Antonio Brown fiasco happened, but uh, I thought we were going to lose the game on top of it. So at least winning the football game, being 12-4, and uh, which I believe means that if we win next week, that's the best season in Buccaneers regular season history. So I'm having fun, right? <laughs> that's the first thing. We got to talk about Antonio Brown and all this stuff. I made a quick video about that just because I knew the story was going to blow up. Wanted to give my quick thoughts on it. But, uh, I mean, and also, I should mention, there's no film study coming here for this one. I know people like the film studies. I like the film studies. But the reason why there is no film study is just uh, I wasn't planning on making one of this game. And then all of a sudden, the craziness happened. And I just wanted to get my thoughts out on it. So I'm going to do kind of these things, which I like doing, these uh, you know general thoughts videos. But anyways... Uh, let's talk Antonio Brown. So now what I've heard, because I made the initial video talking about it, there's been reports that Antonio Brown was benched right before what we saw happen. Because there's also another side angle where you see Antonio Brown screaming at something, and then he kind of even, it looks like he screams at Evans a little bit, but I'm not sure, my guess is Evans said something to him, and then he said something back to Evans. Uh, and so then they kind of, uh, looked like Evans was trying to calm him down. That's what it looked like to me. Again, I can't hear what's going on, so all we can do is kind of look at body language. Maybe it wasn't that, but uh, that's what it seemed like. And if that is the case, I think, you know, uh, good on Evans for trying. But uh, I think what's more interesting about that is why was Antonio Brown getting benched? That's the question, and that's what we're going to have to have answered. And I don't know, maybe uh, Bruce Aarons, like, I don't know. We can't see the whole play, right? So maybe there was something where Antonio Brown just, like, wasn't hustling and, and he bench got benched or something like that. That's just complete speculation. I have no clue. Uh, but that's what I've heard. And, again, we'll continue to update as we, get, you know, as the story unfolds more and more. Just craziness, though. But I, I do think two things. A, it's incredible what Tom Brady was able to do. I guess three things. A, it's incredible what Tom Brady was able to do uh, with, you know, guys who aren't really necessarily stars. I mean, obviously, you still have Gronkowski, you still have Mike Evans, but, you know, other than that, it's Cyril Grayson who had a big day in this one. It's Tyler Johnson, it's Prashad Perriman, it's Le'Veon Bell uh, who actually had some impact plays in the receiving game, so uh, not much in the rushing game, but in the receiving game. So that stuff, fascinating. The second thing is how much of this is just the Jets defense being the Jets defense. That's a part of it. And by the way, Jets fans, I will get into your side of the game in a second. I promise I'm not just talking about Tampa Bay, although obviously, you know, I'm a Bucks fan, so that's where my bias is. Um, and then the third thing is I still have questions about when we're going up against good defenses, uh, we need a third option now. I mean, desperately. From a team that was considered loaded and so much talent on talent on talent, it's now like our receiving core depth is an issue because Godwin's not coming back. And yes, Gronkowski and Evans are awesome, but what happened? And Evans didn't look healthy out there, I thought. I don't think Evans is, I mean, you know, kind of the, the joke is Evans is never fully healthy. He's always kind of playing through something, but he didn't look fully healthy in this one. He, he didn't to me. Uh, so if he's not 100%, like, is Gronkowski going to carry us to the, the you know, promised land? Because our running game wasn't great in this one either. So what's going to happen there? Because we don't have our starting running back either. Fournette is gone and the injuries are starting to pile up, which that's football. I mean, that happens, but uh, that's definitely a bit of a concern. Although the nice thing is, hey, like someone like Cyril Grayson has stepped up and played well. And you know, I remember, so if you don't know who Cyril Grayson is, he famously or infamously uh, had a pat play where he, uh, you know, he was wide open. Tom Brady threw the ball. It bounced off of his helmet. And then he basically got no playing time for the rest of the year. And I remember even the commentary was, this was why you don't try to make track stars football players. Because, you know, he, that's what he is. He's a track star. Uh, but he couldn't really, you know, make these plays. Well, he, you know, made the big one. He got the big touchdown and had some other impact plays in this one. And this is kind of always my logic is, get me the guy with talent. It's a lot easier to, you know, get a guy who can run uh, really fast to catch a football than it is to get a guy who can catch a football to run really fast. So give me the guy who has the tools, especially when it's just a depth guy like Grayson. 
Uh, Tyler Johnson had a tough drop. Uh, he at least did have some uh, stuff on that last drive. That helps. But, you know, you would like to see him start doing better. So there, there's some stuff that you want to see happen more with this depth. But, again, the nice thing is Tom Brady played really well in this one, I thought. Uh, you know, the interception was bad, and it was on him, in my opinion. But other than that, I did think he played really well. That That's how I thought about it. Excited that the Buccaneers were able to get the win. The flip side, uh, let's go over to the Jets, because I thought that this is a good game for the Jets. Zach Wilson made some great throws. I think this was the best game Zach Wilson uh, has had. Maybe the Titans game was really good, too, but the Titans game was different in a good way. You know, Titans game was he just made some incredible athletic plays. This game was more so... Uh, I thought he actually ran the offense. He ran the offense as well as I've seen him do. That I can, I think it's just fair to say Braxton Berrios is a good player. Like you've got something in Braxton Berrios. Don't know how much else you have in the receiving core, but you at least have that one spot. And that's cool to see uh, at the end of the day. Like, you know, I thought Zach Wilson did what you asked him to. We should talk about some of these questionable decisions. I think the main one is that uh, just weird play call uh, on the fourth down. I like going for it. I think that go, why not go for it, right? Because if you kick the field goal, then it's the difference between four and seven points. So basically what you're doing with the field goal is saying if the Buccaneers score, uh, it goes to uh, overtime instead of you just went out, right? Or there's a two-point conversion try. Whereas the value of going for it is if you get it, you just win. So I like all of that. I, I just didn't know if I loved that decision. I, I think an outside run would have made more sense. They were having success with that. But again, uh, you know, there, I'm sure there was some logic behind why they did what they did. I just personally didn't really understand the logic behind it. Also, Michael Carter, uh, you know, really good stuff when he was on the field, unfortunately. You know, uh, only got three carries in this one. But uh, I thought that, you know, what, what, what little we saw of him was fun. And now going back to Tampa Bay, just sort of to close things up, to put a bow on this, again, wild game. One thing, uh, did, did the broadcast say something? Because I wasn't listening to the broadcast. I don't know why they went for two there at the end. I don't know what the advantage is of going up four instead of three there. I feel like that's, you know... You don't want to risk like a big return and then they can kick a field goal and win it. I thought that was a weird call by uh, the Bucks offense, but I'm not sure why they did that. That was odd. Uh, I guess a field goal then doesn't win it. You need a touchdown. I don't know. Uh, that was bizarre to me. Um, but a couple other things about, for one thing, the Rams lost, which is huge actually, because uh, with that loss, it means that if the Buccaneers just win out, this means that we can get the three seed. And the difference between a three seed and a four seed is big in the NFC. I, in my opinion, I don't want to play Arizona in that wild card game. I'd rather play whoever is the six or seven seed. Um, and so, you know, getting that, I feel like there's five really good teams in the NFC and not having to play one of those in round one, uh, getting a better opportunity for round two, that, that's what I want. Um, also, I thought Rob Gronkowski had a great game as, you know, typical as we expect from Rob Gronkowski. So that stuff is good. And uh, I know there's a lot of concerns to be had for this game. But at the end of the day, I still have uh, a lot of faith uh, in this team to at least play well and do solid things. They're a good team. Are they the best team in football? Probably not. But I didn't think they were the best team in football at this point last year either. And they won the Super Bowl. So uh, it's still possible. They're a team that could win it. That's my main thoughts on it. So, yeah. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.